Good performance on the weekend. Uh, there were more positives than negatives. There are clearly some things we need to continue to grow through and, and clean up, and I hope that we will. Um, it's hard to beat somebody three games. They're hitters. I tip my hat. Those guys hung in there, and they gave us battles, and they had a good approach, and they had a good two-strike approach, and they grinded out at-bats JMU. I thought the variety of guys they ran out on the mound was impressive, and I think they're a, a solid team. Um, Jamie Arnold, first start. We all know what that's like to roll out there for your first appearance at-bat, inning of defense on the mound. And Jamie's going to be good. You know, the first pitch is crazy. To, of all the things you think he might do with the first pitch to doink a guy, not what you would think, but it happened. And then, you know, the nice double play. And, again, those guys are experienced, and they, they have a good sense of what they're doing at the plate. So to, to handle the double play, it looks easy, but that ball's hit hard, and the timing of the, the feed from Cam to DeSatis was really nice, and it was a good double play, and we got off the field. And I think we scored in four – five innings in a row maybe to kind of get out of the gates. And as that was happening, they answered with three of their own. So I think we found in the third inning, maybe, did that thing get back to three to three? to three? Um, And they strung out bats together. I don't know how many doubles, three doubles maybe in that inning to reset things. And then we're first and second, nobody out. And, you know, we, we had some things with the short game that we've talked about through the months of the intel on our group. Uh, and we had a chance to do it, and we bunted a bad pitch, and we made a really tricky base running mistake at second base. So all of a sudden, you feel like that inning where you're ready to answer, you snuffed it out. And then the guys regrouped and actually answered in a more difficult way than the inning was actually starting out to present itself for you to, to score. So I, again, I'm proud of the guys and Colton Vincent to go back there and catch like that. You're not quite in that shape. We don't do that in the preseason. Like there's not nine inning scrimmages three days in a row for somebody to catch. There's just not. And he did a nice job and his at bats were good. He had a bunch of key at bats in the series. It was good to see Tibbs get going a little bit. Very talented, we, we can tell that. And you saw it a little bit today on display. I guess he was a double short of hitting for the cycle. Um, and carry on, just savviness, like being in the dugout instead of against them, like in here with them, you start to learn things. And I was really impressed with some of those older guys and how they manage the game. Carry on, you know, ball down the left field line, ball to right. He sprayed the thing around all weekend and did a nice job at shortstop. I think he, I thought he was, you know, with Vincent, a catalyst of the whole thing this weekend. Um, Dougie Kirkland. We need that, and we need it to keep getting better. We had not built him to a point of extending him beyond what he did, so we thought that was, that was clearly enough, and we need his electricity. It can be special stuff, and the more he gets out there, I think it'll continue to trend up, and uh, we'll be able to use him in a variety of, of roles. So overall, pleased, um, disappointed in how it actually ended there. I thought we got sloppy and I wish some of those guys that had chances out of the pen were more like what we expected and what we saw in some of the scrimmage settings. You talked about that double play that started off by Cam. He started in that situation. You got a freshman on the mound. He's a freshman. I mean, that could change the election. That doesn't go well. <laughs> no doubt. Like it's a, it's not a, it's a play that needs to be made, but the way things were going and what's going on on the mound, like it, it's not always as easy as it, it looks. And that ball was hit hard, and you know Cam is still settling in and learning how to play that position. And he did a really nice job. Your second baseman has to track a pretty good ways to get there, and Dunaway has bunted numerous times, so we had to defend the bunt. So Cam had that ball in no time, so he had good savviness to, to let Nander get to the bag. And the issue wasn't necessarily, are you going to get the out at first? It's let's make sure we do it rhythmically so your second baseman's in position to finish the double play. Not Nice stuff, yeah. You're probably going to have, I mean, a game a weekend where you're without Wyatt and without Connor in the bullpen there. How encouraged were you? You talked about Kirkland, but him, Army, and Dennis, and just what they gave you, I mean, in relief there. Yeah, I was, I was very pleased with that. Um, and we've seen spurts of it in our scrimmages. And... They're going to be critical in this. Like, we're going to have to mix and match a little bit. Our depth is not one of our strengths. I think 
the combination of everything is a strength, but the raw depth of it, if you're just going down the line, is not one of our strengths just with sheer numbers on the pitching staff. So Kirkland, man, Armstrong, Oxford, we need Barfield to be a little bit better. David Barrett's going to really help us with the power breaking ball, and Dennison's going to help us, and Walker's figured out a little slider. I mean, all those guys are going to factor into this if we're going to be the type of team that we hope we are. Coach, you see the bats in such a big way on a Sunday to close out a series. What did you like on the guys that broke into the play? I know you talked about a couple of them, but just as a whole, so many guys getting involved today. I thought the at-bats from start to finish were really good really good and it's hard to kind of dial it in and consistently like I don't I don't care what's going on to score 16 17 runs and bang out hits like that I mean it takes less than two strike discipline and composure and getting good balls to hit and then you're still going to get to some two strike counts and some of the damage we did was with two strikes so I was pleased with all of it now we mixed in another base hit bunt our bunting game like I've told you I needed to be a weapon it's not a weapon yet, like it shows signs of being that, but you know, as we can throw that in there, like Diamas, I think, laid one down on his own. Um, those, are, those are big parts of your big innings. So I did, I did like the totality of the at-bats and the offense today is good. The base running early, though, um, were those aggressive mistakes, just mistakes? How do you differentiate between bad base running and aggressive base running that doesn't turn out well? Yeah, the, the bunt play that was popped up, I mean, clearly the ball is popped up one and it's foul two. So there's nowhere for you to go but back to second base. And Kay just, just one of those things. He had not been out there yet this season, and now he's all of a sudden out there and we're running one of our plays. It's nothing more than, you know, just a bunt play. There's nothing going on. <laughs> so that type of mistake is, you know, a mental, complete mental mistake. And then some of the other stuff, you know, the, the ball, I think, where Rich tried to score the guy in second, like we actually won a game here on the ground ball to second base on Friday night when they tried to throw home. So sometimes if that's the third out at the plate, then you'll take that aggression. Um, Jaime made a mistake on the ball he hit in the corner because as long as it took that ball to rattle around, we were clearly going to score the run. So really the only thing that could happen negatively in that situation is if you actually get thrown out at third on the relay itself, which is what happened. If they relay it and throw it to the plate and you try to take third and the catcher comes and gets it and throws you out, then that's a different sort of tactic, I guess. The way he did it was probably not ideal. But again, like some of this is their focus and intensity of trying to run the bases hard. And I'd much rather have that than trying to throttle guys up and make them think like more aggressively. In these cases, we probably needed to think a little more cautiously, which is always the way you'd like to adjust because it's hard to dial them the other way. You've been around these guys now for seven or eight months, but can you learn a lot just in these three games, just seeing how they interact? A ton, a ton. Um, and I did. You know, you learn every inning that goes by. You listen and watch how they interact here. and. The bullpen management, I thought all the guys came in on point and prepared. And then you learn when they go out there, like what it looks like and feels like in the games and who seems like on the mound, they're in control of their outing and their pitching and their sequencing. And um, we do learn. And I, I, I'll be honest, I felt like coming into it, I saw what I thought I might see this weekend. Now, there were things that didn't quite go like I envisioned, but there was a lot that went like I thought. And I'm pleased with some things, and I'm still <laughs> concerned with some things. But yeah, it's, it's a growth process. And until you've played together, you don't have the sense of gamesmanship and the atmosphere of the competition. You can't create it in practice. As hard as we try, this is unique. And it was, it was great to get into it. Overall, your first weekend all together, you know, electric crowd. How did you feel about that? You know, how they helped the team as well? Thought it was great. All three games great crowd I know today was early but people kept filing in here and by the end of it it was a, it was a great crowd and I'm so thankful for the fans here they're great the knowledge of the game and you know the applause for the the right fielder their right fielders a really good player and the guy had two or three things out there in the wall that happened to him in a 15 minute span and that last one he got banged up pretty good and our fans are thoughtful and respectful and they know the game and it was good to 
have a bunch of them here. I, I love the atmosphere, and I think the players relished it and, and played well in it. Coach, you touched on just you know, continuing to learn these guys, now going to JU and then a tough, obviously, first road trip uh, of the season. Just uh, excited to see them play on the road and away from home and, and things of that nature. Yes, when you look at the team, we did not play great in the final game of series here, which would have been today. We did not play great on the road. That's just a raw numerical fact. I, I don't know what it was, but that's a sign of the toughness of the team. Like you have to go out and finish this off. Like today, you needed to go out and find a way to beat the same team for the third time, and it's not always easy. It's not always easy to win the series. Sometimes you're fighting to keep from getting swept, which you hope that doesn't happen often, but it unfortunately is the case sometimes. So that third game and then on the road, how you play in a venue that you don't practice in, like we're gonna go to JU and show up. Some of these guys have been there, some of them uh, have not, and you're not gonna go over there and have three practices. You're gonna take your 40 minutes of BP and infield outfield and you're playing and it counts and the ramifications are significant of that. So that's part two of big picture schedule schematics, what we clearly need to be better at. And that was a point today. You know, the timeline and the discipline of getting here early and going through the things that we do pregame with meaning and on time and with discipline to prepare, that's part of the third game and it's also part of the road. So we have to do better at that. You seemingly handle all the pomp and circumstance of you coming back to your alma mater and you know, coaching your first series pretty well. I mean, do you feel relief though? Are you able to finally sleep well? And is, does it feel like game on now finally? Well, I, I felt like it was game on the first pitch Friday. And the longer you do it, you have to be able to in these, this is a big moment in all of the regionals and super regionals in Omaha and all of the different places you've coached in those games, you have to be able to really lock in, just like I tell them. The distractions were real for the players, and it was real for me this weekend. There was a lot that came with trying to simply get to 502 Friday. But I do enjoy and feel most comfortable with the actual game, because that's what you're calibrated to do, and you're just simply trying to put all the work of these guys into competitive use where they can find themselves in positions to win. And we don't look at the result before we kind of look at how we're going to get through inning one defensively and offensively. And if you segment it down to those little things like I tried to do for myself, that's why I kept telling you I just want to have a good inning. I was talking myself into being sure you're ready and focused for, for the first pitch of the game. That's how we go about it. And that makes it as simple for myself as I can make it, dealing with all of the other layers that I deal with, especially leading into Weekend one. Do you have a plan for a starter on Tuesday or just reevaluate after the way? We need to evaluate it. And Benny Barrett, we were excited about him being a part of this, and he was just sick. He was just under the weather, and we didn't want to force him. He could have helped us today, but he's an option to start, and I, I can't think through who else would be available at the moment. But I think we're in pretty good shape, like going into Tuesday. Um, the strength of that bullpen and the variety when you get into those Tuesday games, like somebody's going to start it. But again, similar to this weekend, nobody's going to be able to kind of carry you too deep. So the mixing and matching and bouncing and who, who should enter the game if there's a mess and who's better off entering the game if the game is clean and there's no base runners, those are the things that you have to look at. So Chuck and I will work through that this evening. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks,